We're going heading up towards Darwin now. We're going to cross into the Northern Territory and uh, watch those speeds, uh, speed limit go up to 130 plus GST, I oh, think. Well, you know, the government charges GST. <laughs> So we're in the middle of the Northern Territory and I met this guy Jack. What are you doing here mate? Uh, five months ago I left Victoria on the uh, push bike and uh, decided to ride around Australia in honour of my mate's dad who passed away from MND. So motor neurone disease is yeah, a disease that shuts down your vital functions, attacking all the nerve the nerve ends and whatnot and uh, it leaves you wheelchair bound and it attacks people pretty, pretty fast mm. and it is a... Uh, terminal illness so raised nearly 47 grand for the foundation and uh, yeah, it's taken five months to pedal across the Nullarbor to Perth up the west coast of Broome across yeah. the Gibb River Road up to Darwin now to uh, yeah three ways here at the Barclay Turnoff so and you're 18 yeah 18 just left school yeah just finished school yeah wow that's absolutely incredible um, do we Mention how many hour um, k's a day you do yeah 110 to 120 is a yeah. big day but uh with these winds, you cut it back a bit because okay. they're just too strong. So um, I've asked you before about the spiritual side of this. Yeah. yeah. What What would you uh... say? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So I grew up with a Catholic upbringing. I just went to Catholic school, but as I said, when I finished school, my mate my mate died of meningococcal meningitis. Mm. So I was completely healthy, 18 year old, and and yeah, passed away after a couple nights being sick. Uh, so my faith, yeah, my faith in God, I guess, was a bit. Mm. dampened by that but yeah I don't I don't say I really don't believe but mm. you know it's tough for me to say that I do at the same time mm. so yeah it's, yeah it's a tough question death death is uh, horrible uh, obviously but um, Jesus conquered death mm. what do you think about that yeah you know I, I've, I've heard all the stories I've heard it all but yeah, in saying okay. that why would he take you know yeah. an 18 year old's life Mm. His, his life's just started sort of thing, mm. you know, yeah. got the high, second highest score, score in, in year 12 oh, out of the whole really? school and, and that happened to him. Wow. So I understand it's life and all that, but mm. but yeah, tough for me to mm. accept that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, can I um, pray for you for your journey? Yes. Is that all right? Yes. All right, can I put your hand? Yes, you can. Dear little Lord, we've met this gorgeous guy Jack and uh, he's an amazing guy and we pray that as he goes on his journey that you will keep him safe from the trucks, the cars, the crocs Lord and uh, Lord I just want to ask for tailwinds for him uh, for a speedy journey and a safe journey and Lord uh, most important I pray that he encounters you and uh, we thank you Lord Jesus, that we've met him today. Amen. Yep, amen. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thanks, Jack. No, that's, that's really fine. good. No worries. Well, we've arrived at Mataranka in the Bitter Springs. I'm stuffed. I've lost my voice. I went to the warmest climate, the Northern Territory, and got the flu. This is the rig at the moment. One never goes in the Northern Territory anywhere without your handy little backpack and pack of ice. It's most 32 degrees all day. All you want to do is bathe in ice. Drink ice, ice under your armpits, ice around your neck, and anywhere else you want to shove it. The temperature's about oh, 30 degrees. It's just, just lovely. It's a beautiful environment. Actually, it looks like um, Dreamworld. It's so beautiful, it sort of looks fake. Well, it's one of those rather gnarly and aggressive crocs. <laughs> oh, shut up! <laughs> <laughs> nah. It's a beautiful 36 or 7 degrees. So lovely in the water. It's like body temperature. It's really nice. 
Joe, what are you doing right now? We're just floating down uh, probably about 200 metres. We've got our little thongs on and then you come back via a path and then you go and float down again. Nick sinks on one noodle. So we have to share our noodles. So we join together. <laughs> so that's us floating down. Bit of streams. No. Bit of springs. Woohoo! Uh, as much as God is present in his creation, he is at home in his children by the presence of his Holy Spirit. He makes his home. It's very easy to worship, to lift your eyes, to think of God in places like this. So thank you God for your incredible creativity. Thank you, God, for making your home inside of us. Thank you. through the kakadu this uh, my immunity is not so great at the moment and uh, they've got some mozzies that bite through clothing it carries some fairly decent viruses I think dengue I'm not 100% sure about it but uh, I can ill afford to get that at the moment so we're just going to keep our motorbike gear on and take a bit of a flight through the kakadu and boy was it hot I mean, we've traveled nearly 500 k's today in this 37 degree, 35 to 37 degree heat. And uh, we needed to stop and wet our gear and rehydrate a couple of times. It's been really quite punishing. But as we were about 68 k's short of uh, the turn off to Darwin, um, we saw the jumping croc sign. So we thought, what the heck? Screeching to a halt and turned up at Adelaide River. And all our extra gear we plonked in the offices and then just jumped straight on a boat and had a great experience. Hello Croc. And we'll show you some of that footage now. There you go, the little bung arm. So this time when she jumps up folks, have a look at that little bung arm on the right hand side. She either didn't form any foot or just got chopped as a baby. Yeah. Oh yeah. So she's not so angry now. Once we get a first jump out of it, it's like breaking a wild horse. She's just like, okay, I know what I've got to do. <laughs> but she definitely tries her chances first of just snatching it for free. It's like I feel the uh, ocean. And we've been so far from the ocean for so long. It's quite a feeling. I can see it now. Amazing. It's lovely coming into Darwin when it's cooling down. Well, here we go. It's a lovely city. It's very hot, but it's clean, it's fresh. It's been um, hammered in uh, 1942 by the Japanese bombers. And more people, uh, actually over 200 people died here. No one really much knew about it in Australia because they didn't want to talk about it. And then again, um, in 1974, the Cyclone Tracy came and just like wiped it out. That was on Christmas Day. Uh, it was a morale thing. They didn't want to depress the rest of the country like we're being invaded. So um, they wanted, you know, the whole propaganda thing. It's a morale that wins a war, apparently. And uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, you'd reckon if if someone was bombing my country, I'd, that'd get me goat up. You know, I'd be like, okay, now 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 I'm ticked off. Now I'm going to fight. You know what I found fascinating, love? 
that we were sitting there having a cup of coffee with a couple of guys probably from Japan playing golf and like how different things would have been if they had taken the country and you know we have such an ability to get on with each other and to trade with each other and do coffee with each other why were we killing each other G'day. Hello. My Welcome. name's Nick, how are you? Yeah, good, I'm Mal. Mal, where are we right now? We're in Darwin Baptist Church, Nick. If you had to describe uh, your work here and the work of the church uh, in Darwin's context, sure. How, what does that look like? The same-sex marriage issue is probably one of the hot-button issues for us at the moment. We want to model what a respectful conversation might look like. Fantastic. Uh, so you've got some ground rules. Yeah, well, there will certainly be ground rules. <laughs> what, what, what will they look like? Um, that we... If you've got an opinion, we're, we're, it's okay to express it. Um, other people may not agree with it, may or may not agree with it, but let's talk about why we have a particular opinion. So there'll be the, a responsibility to, to speak respectfully, not to talk over each other. Let's talk about the issues. Let's not make personal judgments, you know. Yeah, um, play the issue, not the man. Exactly, yeah. yeah. And so... so I, th I think it was, uh, was it Ravi Zacharias made this point some time back um, that people, all people are deserving of respect, but issues are up for challenge. Excellent. Uh, and I think that's a really good starting point for us. What are, what are my blind spots? Yes. You know, what am I not seeing about myself that I actually, if I'm going to live responsibly before God and in relationship with him, what do I need, actually need to let go of? A foundational to the conversation too is about how do you interpret scripture and mm. what role does the word of God have yeah. as a normative and authoritative yeah, yeah, in yeah. human life. Beautiful Timor Sea with friends, picnic, Darwin in our background. Uh, well, the whole experience has been an experience of faith. I wouldn't have come here without God sending me first. And like, it was never my plan. It was him prompting me to apply for jobs and it was him who gave me jobs and um, allowed me to be supported um, as I started my new teaching career. Talking to people who are not Christians who have come up here, they found it really, really challenging to be able to connect with people. If you get into church, you start to feel more connected, go to Bible study, hang out with people, you have to actually invest for, for relationship to grow. Have a look at our setup here at the Backpackers Hotel. It's like a hospital room, but half the size. It's air conditioned, which is good. There we go. And we do have a toilet and a shower, which is cool. So in the meantime, we've got to go get our fresh set of tyres. We use me old girl. Hutched out hole of exhaust. It was a pig to get the back tyre off. This phrase is done up nice and tight for me. There she is, ready for some new tyre blood. We're just exiting from Darwin on the Stewart Highway heading towards Litchfield National Park which is a, a real uh, playground for the Darwin people. Oftentimes on the weekend they'll go there to swim in the heat with the natural rock pools. Quite busy, but thankfully it's Tuesday, so we're going out there now. Hopefully, it'll be less busy, but there'll still be the grey nomads who find this place, as well as Edith Falls, one of the most popular places to go to.
Stay on your side of the road, please. There's a line there. It's two way. This is a termite mound. It's called a cathedral termite mound from the shape. So one of a few species that actually build mounds above the ground to protect themselves out of the wet, control humidity, control temperature. Um, that's why they survive. They're blind, these little animals, but there you are. They provide an amazing food source for the birds, the reptiles, even the fish eat these things. So what was thought to be just a pest may well be a vital part of the ecosystem out here in the Litchfield National Park, 100 k's or so south of Darwin. And this little sucker here is purported to be about 50 years old. It's older than my house, twice. So well done, Mr Termite. Good job. Solid build. I don't know if you can see it, but the water is just coming out of a rock. That's so cool. Talk to us, honey, about Moses. One day, uh, Moses was leading the thousands and thousands, maybe even up to two million people in the inhospitable desert on the Israelite wanderings between Egypt and the promised land of Canaan. Now, run out of water. But God knew where it was and he said to Moses, speak to the rock. So God just wanted the words he'd given Moses to do the job, but on previous occasion Moses had tapped the rock, so he went back to what he knew and tapped the rock. And so doing, disobeyed God and got God's anger because of it. In fact, for that very reason, God said, uh, I'm not going to let you actually make it into the promised land, even though you've been sojourning for 40 years with these guys. You're going to see it, you're going to stand on a mountain and look at it, but I'm not going to let you get into it. But I guess that then highlights, when God says something specific, we've got to listen and we've got to do it. And it's very tempting to go back to the familiar and the thing that worked before, but if God's doing something new, stay on that. And let's not forget that God can sometimes get a bit cranky and he can discipline his kids. And these are the road trains that we've been overtaking. They're 53 metres long. They're absolutely massive. And the, and the back one sways quite a bit as well. So you just got to keep wide of them. We're at Catherine Gorge and it's absolutely gorgeous! It's just got the browns of the rock the blue of the sky and the green of the vegetation is really a lot about the colour of Australia. Um, this is in the dry season, in the wet season it's another you know, eight metres higher, the water. And in fact, in the 1998 flood, when it went three metres into the town of Catherine, they uh, were cleaning it up and in the Woolworths they found a saltwater crocodile. That's called fresh meat right there. So, this is Catherine, named after uh, <coughs> the explorer Stuart coming through here and his uh, benefactor Chambers got a daughter called Catherine and Edith, hence the name of um, a lot of the areas around here after, after the <coughs> benefactor's family. Nice. You may be able to see, but there's a whole world of bats out there. Oh, there's bats in the Where? trees. Everywhere in the tree. Look at them. They're horrible. <laughs> They're all got their little wings. They're upside down. 
Vampire bats? I just want to kill them. You just want to kill them, honey? <laughs> Put them out of their misery? We are at the uh, pools, the hot springs at Catherine, just outside of town. You know, float all the way down that river for a couple of, I don't know, five minutes or so. It's beautiful. We're in Catherine with Rachel Borneman, who's a missionary, and she's going to tell us a little bit about what she does here. Hi, um, I'm with Wycliffe Bible Translators in partnership with Scripture Union Northern Territory, and my role is to encourage the use of the Creole Bible uh, with Indigenous adults to help them work with their young people. So, can you give us a? Can you read some for us? Maybe sure. in the beginning, because everyone knows sort of that. God been making them averaging. All right, long time when God been start making about averaging. No more energy been jet down. Images anywhere. No more got energy. Only strong bella water been go around, go around everywhere. And even broadly dark bella. And that spirit blung of God been moving but on top long of that water. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. So what have you got <clears throat> for young players like me, tips for young players like me to help with um, talking with Indigenous people? Well, first of all, <laughs> I'd recommend my cross-cultural booklet. Boom. It's a basic cross-cultural training. It's got um, things about respect when you're going into community, um, understanding kinship system and... Mm -hmm. um, a little bit about dreaming and um, just basic, basic understanding to consider um, and understand more about Indigenous yeah. Australians. So we're here with Joanne, who's uh, living in Catherine. And Joanne, do you want to tell us a little bit about your story? Um, yeah, I'd like to share what I, what we yeah, found Jesus. It was in 1991 and my parents were involved in a car crash that was in 1990. And in 91 I found Jesus when I went back for my aunt's funeral. And one of my cousin's sister, she was a leader also. And she asked me to go to a fellowship that night that we had and I said yes and when I went to that fellowship that's when I started listening to the words of God. I like the way she preached about um, John 3.16 and I kept asking myself who Jesus was and every song they shared that night like he is Lord. I didn't know what they really meant, but that night, I guess Jesus wanted me to, yeah, come forward and say yes to him. Can you explain about your, your church at home? Have outdoor um, fellowship out in the oh, yeah. opening. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. We, we stay up late till maybe midnight or maybe even past me <laughs> when the kids see me at home yeah yeah oh that's nice and regularly like is that daily or weekly yeah they, we do that every night oh wow we headed up into the northern territory yes we did and we were ripping around yeah well you were particularly fast i noted yeah <laughs> and uh, we ended up at a place called bataranka which is bitter springs bitter springs and you left your bitterness there, it was beautiful, absolutely. 
Yeah, that was just the most sapphire blue waters. Mm. You just float in there and you'd be there a couple of hours. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And we have chats. We talked to that lady, beautiful lady, who set us up for the rest of the trip on the Western Australia, gave us a whole list of what to do. Just yeah. meet people and they tell you where they're from and tell you what to go and see and that's what you're doing next. Yeah, that's it. That's what we did. Yeah, but I remember we slept for something like 11 hours oh, after that. Yeah. It was just gorgeous. Yeah. The sort of floaty mineral type water yeah. was really lovely. Yeah, we liked that. Do you remember all the different variations of sleeping arrangements we oh, had? on the tent. What did we try? We, try, we tried going without tent under the stars. Dark. We did that once. That was all right. We upgraded from there just to the inner tent at Ranka. Yeah, that's right. Just a little single room inner tent. And how long did it take you to put that up, I think honey? it took longer to put the inner tent up than I, I did to put the tent I up. I think it was about two hours. Mm. <laughs> so where did we end up? Easy to pack down, though. Uh, yep, so we ended up taking doing the tent again. Back to the tent. <laughs> Edith Falls, love? Yeah. Happy with Edith Falls? Oh, it was beautiful, beautiful. And we got some great shots there, didn't we? We did, it was not an easy feat. We had to cross over that channel mm. with thousands of dollars of gear over our head. Yeah, we were so worried. And if we'd fell, it was over. Gone. That it wasn't waterproof. But what shots we got. Mm. All right, well, we ripped up to Kakadu. Well, we were going up to Darwin, so we went through the Kakadu. Took a ride off the Sturt Highway and Stuart, went right. Eh? Stuart, I beg your pardon. Right off the Stuart Highway to do mm. this sort of loop around towards Darwin. Yeah, and apparently the locals say to us, uh, Kaka don't, <laughs> rather than Kaka do, because, mm. you know, all the water holes had crocodiles in them, so you couldn't really swim in them. Mm. And it was so hot and the marsh flies were massive, so we just took that opportunity to take some curves at speed. And because we had a few. Kakadu racetrack? Yes, it was. We stumbled just before going into Darwin. <gasps> Adelaide River. Adelaide River. Adelaide yeah. River. You know, a nice place to get your little kayak yeah. out, take the wife and kids, have a picnic on the bank? <laughs> I don't think so. No. There was like 7,000 crocodiles within like a kilometre or something. It was ridiculous. Like they were everywhere. And apparently for every one you see, there's three you don't. Mm. And uh, we heard a story of this fisherman was... Um, he went in to save his two buck lure. And unfortunately the croc, which was a rare albino croc, came in and took his arm off yeah. and then took him out mm. and took him down. Mm. And he was a local guy. Yeah, so he must have got uh, um, just fixated on what he was doing and didn't think about the danger, so. We went up to Darwin and your efficiency did never cease to amaze me. Lunch, anybody? <laughs> you just walk well, into a Well, you could pay, like, you know, arm and leg for, your, for a yoghurt with uh, fruit and nuts, or you could just buy the whole ingredients and shove it in. So, Betty goes in, buys a tub of <laughs> yoghurt, in goes a bowl of strawberries, in goes a bunch of nuts, out come the plastic knives, fork and spoons, and just outside the front of Woolies, down goes the most sumptuous repast, <laughs> and uh, throw away all the material, no washer. Brilliant. Betty went efficiency. <laughs> We ended up heading down from Darwin to the much lauded natural beauty of Litchfield Camping we Ground. We were looking forward to that. Litchfield was a beautiful waterhole, yeah. very tricky camping ground. Yeah. It was really hard. That's hard ground. ground. The, there was not much shade. The ants were like, I, I swear, at least the size of cockroaches. There was much flies in the day biting yes. you, taking chunks off you, and at night you had one relief for one minute from the flies. And then the ants took over, it was like they... No, the mozzies. Up. Oh, the mozzies. The ants were all through the day. So it was like one of them tag teamed the other <laughs> insect and said, right, your turn, they're but over there, go get them. There was an advantage for travelling in the winter time up there. We had six weeks where we didn't see yeah. one drop of rain no. anywhere. That was great. Yeah. Hmm. It's brilliant. And you use the uh, bikes to good effect? Yes, they uh, doubled up, the Ducati uh, doubled up as a clothesline, so I was really happy with that. So we pulled off into Catherine, we had mm. some Aboriginal mission stuff to do, and yeah. just as you do in the campground, yeah. met a guy on a motorbike. Yeah, and we had a lovely chat to him, James, and uh, he was looking for purpose. He was going around Australia looking for purpose, and we, told, we talked to him about God and uh, Jesus, and. Um, he was pretty happy about that and you prayed for him, which was lovely. Yeah, that was sort of not an uncommon thing. You're just meeting yeah. people mm. and uh, they're, they're very open-hearted when they're out there. Mm. They're on a journey, they're looking for something. Yeah. They're not quite sure. Yeah. So it's a, it's a nice place to be able to talk about the ultimate something. Mm. Well, there's little, plenty of time to do that too. Yeah, I should say the ultimate someone. Mm. That would be Jesus. Amen. 
Where are we off to next? Well, we're going to uh, into Western Australia now. So that's done uh, Northern Territory, really. Off to Lake Argyle. Yay. Okay.